Hello again, beloved, it's Thomas here. Today, we're going to start a very, very, very crucial lesson. Sixth lesson of the fundaments of faith, the Bible. Okay, so 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 and 17 all the scripture is god breathed and it's profitable for doctrine reproof correction instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be perfect uh, perfected throughoutly furnished to every good work of god so <clears throat> all the scripture is breathed of god so the scripture is not for a fourth person of the Trinity. Many people say that the Bible, they treat, many, many Protestants treat Bible as a fourth person of the Trinity. But it is not. It is under the influence of, breathed on. So it's like, I don't know, 90% of it is God and 10% might be human. So, mm, this is not like a, that somebody took and God spoke to him and he wrote something. This is breathed on, so inspired by. So, Bible is inspired by God, breathed on by God, anointed by God. The, the words that are here, not the book itself. <laughs> the book itself is not anointed. Anointing is in you. I will explain that a little bit um, uh, later um, today. <coughs> <coughs> so personal. <coughs> so every personal revelation have to be included in in the revelation of the Bible. So if you have your own revelation, this revelation needs to be covered by the scripture. You cannot have your own revelation outside of the Bible context. Um, many sects or occultists or uh, religious um, movements are doing like this. They, they have some visions. The Mary comes and have some visions for Catholics and any sect that has uh, some other teachings and uh, revelations and visions outside of the scripture context. You cannot do this. So the Bible is like a fundamental scripture context uh, that what God is doing, who is God, and uh, how God is working. Outside of it, there is no truth. So this is the word of God, yes? This is the word, breathed word of God. Breathed word of God. This is not the word of God. This is inspired word of men by God. You understand? The Bible is a man's word. The Bible is not speaking God to the writer, but a collection of seen and imagined, imagined stories, often interpreted differently. Matthew 27, 38. To, <clears throat> you need to understand that Bible, uh, many people, if they treat Bible as God, because they say the word was flesh and this and that and they say oh this book no, not this book the word of god was in flesh not this book this book is not holy this book is a book <laughs> book paper paper so many people read the bible and nothing happens so many so many people interpret the bible uh, wrongly like Hitler he was a Catholic and he took from the Bible what he wanted he built in Auschwitz he built uh, because of the revelation that he was given from the Bible so yeah uh, Matthew 10 27 <clears throat> so many people if they treat Bible uh, as God uh, then they would say that Bible is um, Literally, there is no mistake, and they, they treat this like God. You cannot treat Bible as God. You have to treat the anointing that is with you, the God, Holy Spirit, as God, not the Bible. 
Many times when I ask people, are you spending time with God? They say, I read the scripture. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about spending time in chamber, uh, praising God and etc., etc. Not in the scripture. Scripture is something that can motivate you, show you uh, plans, foundations, uh, teachings, etc. But it's not God himself. God is spirit. God is not book. <laughs> So I want to show you, first of all, a few mistakes in the Bible, which the Bible is also covers as mistakes, if you know what I mean. The, the Bible says it, not my interpretation. So let's go. First of all, Matthew 27, 38. Two thieves were crucified with Jesus, one of the, on the right side, the other on the left side. And 27, 20, 44. Two bandits were crucified with him, re rebuked Jesus, in the same way. So Matthew is speaking that you remember Jesus Christ and two bandits on the left and the right. Two is saying rebuked him. Two people rebuked him. Mark 15, 27. They crucified two bandits with him. One on the right, one on the left. And he was also rebuked by those two of them who were crucified with him. This is Matthew and Mark is saying that they were <clears throat> rebuking Jesus. Luke 23, 39. And one of the criminals who hung with him rebuked him. If you are Christ, save us. But the second spoke up, rebuking the first one, saying, You are not afraid of God, even though you bear the same punishment. We are indeed fairly punished, for we received payment for our deeds. But he did not do not anything wrong. And he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, Truly I say unto you, today you will be with me in paradise. It's a mistake in the Bible. I mean, mistake. <laughs> um, I think that Matthew and Mark were a little bit far away from the cross. And they only saw that uh, these two guys are like rah, 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 rah. so they interpret <laughs> they interpret that they are rebuking Jesus and they uh, wrote uh, they were rebuking Jesus but I think that Luke was a little bit closer and he heard and he heard that one of them was rebuking Jesus and the other one was uh, not rebuking Jesus but he said admitted his as, as the Lord and Jesus said he will you will be with me in paradise so that means you cannot treat Bible as literal word of God because it is interpretation of human. Mark and Matthew interpret this situation like this and Luke interpret that situation other way. So that's why if you rely only on the Bible as a book and it becomes your God, it's nothing less like religious you know, the religious people have to have something. They have sacraments, they have cross, uh, like wooden cross, they have Holy Mary, and Protestants have book. Many of them have book. I love the book, I love it, but the anointing Holy Spirit is in me. And this book shows me who he is, gives me all the fundaments, gives me all the teaching, but without him in me, I will not have any revelation. It would be only a letter, if you know what I mean. It would be only a letter. Nothing would change. The letter itself is not changing you. The Holy Spirit who dwells in you changes the letter into life. Hallelujah. So that means if I would hurt the Bible, in an audiobook, if I would hear God in a movie, if I, I can hear God and take the revelation from anywhere, not only from the book, if you know what I mean. The book is one of the many things you can rely on, but the book has the, like, you have to filter through these teachings in this book everything you take as a revelation, yeah? But... If you don't have the Holy Spirit, it's only a letter, nothing else. It's not uh, the written word of God is only a letter. So, 
So Luke had a different interpretation on what happened at the cross because Bible is written under the inspiration, not under the recitation, if you know what I mean. They, they did not, you know, be, because if it was like this, why they have different, why have they different interpretation? If there is one situation and two different interpretations, so that means one is wrong. Another one. Acts 9, 3. And he was going down to Damascus. Paul, suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying, So, so, why are you persecuting me? Then he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the men who were with him were speechless, didn't speak. For they heard a voice, but not so anyone. Acts 22. Um, because this Acts 9.3, this is somebody writing about Saul. And Acts 22, Saul is writing about himself. Uh, and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I said, who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom are you persecuting? And those who were with him saw the light and were afraid, but the voice of him did not hear. Listen again, Acts 9. But for they heard a voice, but didn't see. Acts 22. They saw the light, but didn't hear. <laughs> the opposite. So who's mistake? <laughs> Who is mistaken right now? Because in the Acts 9, they heard a voice. In Acts 22, they didn't hear a voice. In Acts 9, they saw no one. In Acts 22, they saw light. Opposite. Somebody is mistaken. So, is God uh, making mistakes? So, the Bible itself has no value of holiness, this book. This is not holy book. Holy is the Holy Ghost. Holy is the Father. Holy is the Son. Holy are you, not book. Because Moses, you know, um, one of my friends uh, one time had a prophecy to read the Bible, to show the people that they are actually, as a prophet, yeah, that they are actually ripping off the Bible. Because what does it mean? It means that you don't care about what it's written here and you don't do what it's written here. So you speak and praise, but you don't listen what the Bible is saying. So prophetically, this lady, this prophet, the prophetess, they took the Bible and, and, and she just threw it away. She just rubbish it and kicked it. And so many Polish preachers until today, they are like shocked what have she done what had she done but moses took one and only tables that god gave him and he when he saw that they made a golden calf what he did with these tables he threw them away and they were broken and god didn't punish moses he said should i kill these people and moses said no 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 don't kill him and god gave him new one and people are so like, oh, she took this holy book. He, she, told, uh, she, she took God and she kicked God. No, she presented a prophecy on this book. Because you have to remember, if you have the application in your smartphone, the Bible. So if you erase, erase this application, it means that you erased God. <laughs> You are easy to erase the application, but then if you tell, if you take the book and it is like holy book. No, it's not holy book. It's a paper. Holiness is in you and the spirit of God is when you read the word is activating by the, mm, by the anointing and teaches you, Holy Spirit in you teaches you 
by this book, by movies, by preachings, <clears throat> by many things. This is a book. All right. So what is this book for? This book is useful for learning, develop, for error detection. Uh, you can understand the heart of God. You can understand the fundamentals, basics. You can understand what's going on, what happened at the cross. You have all the information historically, prophetically in here. So this is a very important book. This is a very important text. I understand this. But this is not holy. Holiness is in you. Hallelujah. So that changes your soul when you are right, uh, reading this with the Holy Spirit. Unborn Christian, unborn, Christ, unborn people, religious or not religious, cannot take anything from this book. Only the information. But this has no power. So this book can improve you, strengthen your soul, brought up into, into righteousness, your, your mindset change. So so Bible is like an airport for the Holy Ghost, who is an airplane. So Holy Ghost is an airplane, Bible is an airport. So Bible is the platform that the Holy Ghost starts on and finishes up. Yeah? So uh, in order for you to go by the Holy Spirit, you need to know the platform. You need to know the truth from this platform. You need to, you need to know the teachings and you don't want to go outside of these teachings. So I understand the teaching, but this is not holy for itself. Holy is God. Hallelujah. So, for instance, uh, many people want to heal the sick yeah? or cast out demons. And they say, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> but demons say to them, I know Thomas, I know Paul, but I, you, I don't know. <laughs> Theory doesn't work. Letter itself doesn't work. Logos is the word of God. Rema is revelation of God's word. This works, but this is a letter. This is a letter on paper. This is a different. This is not Logos, nor Rima. I want you to change your fundament in your heart from the Bible to Holy Spirit that dwells in you. I remember when I was um, searching for the um, like um, revivals in countries and then China came out and they have only one piece, one sentence from the Bible and they worship God, they had great revivals, they healed the sick, they cast out demons they didn't have the Bible <laughs> but they had the Holy Spirit and one quote from the Bible all right so you don't actually need the Bible to be with God if you have the Bible you know more you are conscious more I love this book and I read it and I teach from it only this is the base but I will never treat it as God himself because uh, what's the difference if you treat this book as God and uh, this picture of Jesus as God? This is the same. Don't do this. God is not a picture and a book. Paul didn't have this book. They had to re uh, write it down. <laughs> Remember this. That's why in Poland there was one man who burned the Bible and people were so offended and I was laughing. He burned the book. I know what he wanted to do, but for me, 
who cares anyway? I can say to him, repent, come to God, be born again because you will die. But he didn't burn God. You know what I mean? He didn't burn God. It's a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Remember that Moses had only the first tables that he had were only one and only tables. And even though he crushed them because of anger for the people that they worshipped golden calf, God didn't want to punish him but them. Remember this. So we need to understand also that from the Bible uh, you can take everything you want. Hitler took, as I said before, this um, teaching about uh, that he wants to speed up the process of evolution and that Jews killed the Messiah. Uh, so that's why they he wanted to kill Jews. So this is how you can take from the Bible. If you take a quote only and you can make a doctrine of a quote. So you have to know about the Bible this and you have to know that the Bible needs to be properly interpreted. Revelation 22.18 I testify to everyone who hears the word of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds anything to it, God will also add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes any of the words of this book, if this prophecy, God will take away his portion from the book of life in the holy city. And from this teaching described in this book. First of all, it is about the scroll. You need to remember that the revelation was in a scroll. It was not the book, whole book, whole the Bible, but only the scroll. So Apostle here is saying that if you add to this scroll or if you take to this scroll, something will happen to you. It is not about the book. Bible is not finished. You understand? We are now writing the next episodes of Day of Acts, New Church, F everything. So the Bible is not closed book. John 21, 22. There are many other things that Jesus did, which is they were all written separately. I suppose the whole world would not, could not contain the books that would be written. You, you understand this? The Bible doesn't have everything in it. It has the fundament. It has to be properly uh, like uh, read and he has to be properly, if you teach from the Bible, you need to teach correctly. I understand this, but then it doesn't have everything written in it. For instance, it doesn't have written that uh, there will be cars, vehicles. <laughs> so we cannot uh, watch TV or have cars and uh, shoes, but we have to go back to sandals. No, not everything is in the Bible, but in the Bible we have uh, fundamental teachings that we don't want to go apart. Like, like I said before, it's a platform. You don't want to go outside of the platform. But then you can expand the platform, if you know what I mean. Not outside, but to, um, uh, to, to change the style, to, 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 to build up your building, different one, on the same platform. Hallelujah. So I love the word of God, but is, this is Jesus who gave me life, not this letter, through this letter. I was known about Jesus, but also through preachings and also through TV, who were talking about Jesus. Not only through this, you understand? So Jesus is God. 1 John 2, 27. But the anointing you received from him remains you and teaches you and you do not need anyone to teach you, but the anointing teaches you. This is what I said before. When you read the Bible, the anointing teaches you about God. Without anointing, you would not be taught by God. Yeah? This is not that nobody uh, like uh, is a teacher today. But it, it is like I say to you the words and you say, oh, oh this comes to me, oh, this sentence is whoa, like burning in my heart. This is God teaches you, anointing teaches you and nobody has to do it. So uh, in other words, you need to have revealed everything that is in your heart and then it goes to your mind. 
that's why many people are doing only teachings and they are not born again and they want to um like uh, take everything by mind and nothing works no if you are born again you take you have the anointing and this anointing teaches you and then you change hallelujah And that's why sometimes you can listen to this teaching, sometimes you can read the Bible for the 27th time, and whoa, next revelation. Why? Because you are ready. The anointing teaches you something different that you didn't know before. Yeah? So this is Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Second Peter 1.20 This is primarily knowing that no prophecy of the Scripture is subject to its own interpretation. It was not by human will that prophecy once wa uh, was once brought but god's holy people spoke under the guidance of the holy spirit so you need to know that the word knowing it means before everything else i will tell you this so before everything else i will tell you that scripture it's not subject to so in the beginning, yeah? in the beginning, I want to tell you that the scripture is not subject of your own interpretation. You need to interpret it uh, correctly. So the work, uh, word of God mm, is like a bread. So it doesn't work normally. It has to be eaten. For instance, you take a bread. I don't have the bread with me right now, but I take a bread, bread roll or, or bread with me and I take it here. It, will it work for me? No, I need to eat the bread and then it will digest and then it will produce energy. So that's why you need to eat the book. <laughs> you know what I mean? Eat the book. Not only read the book, but eat the book, digest it. That means uh, practice the book. You need to practice what it's written. So that means take the book, eat the book, digest the book. Only then it is working for you. 1 John 5, 7 For there are those who bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three on the earth that testify, Spirit, water, and blood. These three agree, or these three are one. What does it mean? You need to have three witnesses if you want to have your own revelation. So you don't, you cannot read the Bible. Uh, okay, I read the Bible and I have the quote that uh, whatever you um, you bind on the earth is binded and whatever you release, you release. And this is a confession by priests. But do you have three witnesses? Uh, no. <laughs> Nowhere in the Bible after this it's written that somebody has to go and knock, knock, knock and then your sins are forgiven by a Catholic priest. There is not written in the Bible. Uh, later on, you they interpret this verse only. They didn't have three witnesses. So what? Who is this witness? Spirit, water, and blood. Spirit is your level revelation. Spirit of God. Water is the word of God. So you have many quotes, like on two or three witnesses, uh, the case is done. Says the Bible. So you have to have two or three quotes from the word of God. So you have revelation, interpretation, yeah, revelation. Then you have three quotes in the Bible or two quotes in the Bible confirming this interp revelation, interpretation. And then you have blood, the blood of Jesus Christ lay on the cross for you. So you need to know what Jesus did on the cross for you. You need to know all the divine change at the cross, which I will explain later on. And then you have to filter every and this and this through blood. And then you have the revelation. So this is how you read the Bible. So uh, that's why many times I say to people, don't read the Bible <laughs> at first. When you are born again, listen to my teachings. And then I will teach you how to read the Bible. And then you will read the Bible correctly. But you need to know how to read the Bible. Because in the Bible, you will read everything you want. And you will do with it everything you want. That's very dangerous. That's, that's why you, there are so many movements of Protestant movements. That's why there are many, many interpretations of the Bible. But if you have these three witnesses, 
the Spirit of God, the revelation. Water, so two or three quotes confirming this. And the blood, so the divine, is it agree, is it agreed with work of the cross? For instance, many people are saying to me, Thomas, but in the Bible it is written that Job had disease and God gave him this disease. So maybe, I mean, Satan, Satan gave him, but God allowed. So maybe God allows for this disease today for me because it's written in the Bible. And I say, I don't care if it's written in the Bible. So you have the word, one quote. You, you, may, have, you may have also the second quote, even in the Old Testament, that uh, some kind of disease was given by the Lord or was um, allowed by the Lord to give through Satan. So you have even witnesses, so you have the water. You have the spirit, so you have, okay, I have the revelation that maybe I have. So you have interpretation. So you have the water, but what about the blood? Jesus Christ, a book of Isaiah, tells us that he died on the cross and he took every disease was nailed to the cross. Jesus also, in the Bible, in, uh, in New Testament, I mean in New Testament, <laughs> actually in Old Testament, but I will tell about it, I mean, just in, in a few seconds I'll tell about it. Jesus, when he was on earth, he healed the sick. So if God wanted you to have, to, to have disease to, that you will learn from it as Job, he would not send his son because it's a New Testament right now. He nailed to the cross all diseases. So it, this, it, uh, this revelation does not come through the blood. So that means it's a false revelation. Amen. So you need to have these three witnesses. You need to interpret everything so the Bible through the Bible through the cross. Revelation, Bible, cross. Revelation, Bible, cross. You need to interpret through these three. Also, you need to know that New Testament begins in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The name New Testament begins in chapter 1. <laughs> so when you read, but it is in the New Testament. No. What is Testament? Testament is something that was late after death. So the question, did Jesus die in the first chapter of John, Luke and whatever? No, he died on the cross in the 27, 20, 16, that depends on the book. So from his resurrection, New Testament starts. So when you read the Bible, you have to read it very carefully because uh, many things that Jesus taught were under the law. So that's why his teachings were different than Paul said about grace. And that's why many, many people say, but Jesus said this, but Jesus said this. And I say, I don't even care actually what fleshly Jesus said, because he was speaking to the people under the law. So he, because he didn't die, he didn't uh, rose. So the price was not paid. So the grace was not given. So there was not New Testament. So that, <laughs> that's why... Even Jesus' words need to be filtered by the work of the cross. Hallelujah. Because it was different season. Wow, this is like mind-blowing for everybody. For many, many, many people it's a wow. Revelation. Yes, revelation. I don't care if it's written in, in the Bible. It needs to go through revelation, word of God, and the blood. Sacrifice. This is the Bible. This is... Scripture is saying this. Be wise. Reading the Bible. Do you offer a calf? No. Why? Because the sacrifice of blood was given. Yeah. So you, some things from the Old Testament are gone. Some things are left. That's why you need to interpret what is gone what is left so how to read the bible I would recommend to read the Bible from the New Testament 
from the book of Matthew and then filter it um, through the let letters. Even if you want to read the Bible like the, the best way is to start from letters, Romans, Corinthians, because then you have teachings after the resurrection about grace. And then when you start Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Revelation, then you filter it through the work of Christ, which you were, you would, you were taught by the letters. Yeah? So first you have the letters, Romans, yeah, Philippians, etc. Then you have whole revelation about the cross, about grace. Then you read Matthew, Mark, then you read Revelation and you filter everything through spirit, water and blood. Even everything what Jesus said, you filter, yeah, as I said before. Even the letters, as you can notice, maybe you did not notice, but I've noticed, I don't know. When you read Paul, he spoke differently about God and grace than Peter. When you read Peter, he said differently about God than Jacob. That's why there is so many interpretations of God, of how he behaves and who he is and how he loves us. Because one is saying quotes from Paul's teachings and one is saying from Peter's teachings. And they are a little bit different because Peter had different mindset because he knew Jesus in flesh. And Paul didn't know, but he had the revelation of Jesus Christ resurrected. So I would recommend the best filter is Paul's letters. The best filter. Then filter through, through these letters, cross, grace, filter everyone, even Jacob and Peter, Revela book of Revelation, everybody. You have to filter it. Don't read the Bible as it is written and quote after quote and then only ah, because it is written in the book. It's written in the book. Everything is written in this book. Even that you have to kill the calf. So let's kill the calf. No, 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 no. So, also this is no. Joshua 1.8 Let this book of law not stray from your mouth, but meditate on it day and night, that you may be sure that evening, that everything written in it is fulfilled. Then your way will prosper and you will be successful. So the word of God must be confessed. Because if you confess the word of God, it's stronger. Because the word here is meditate, meditate, murmur, say, confess, speak, read, speak out loud. Say the word of God, say the word of God. If you read the word of God, say it sometimes out loud. Read this word, say about this word, say to somebody about this word. Meditate about this word. After meditation, insp insp uh, inspiration may come. At night, yeah? At night and day, in dreams, while you are awake, while you are teaching, while you are filming, everywhere. I am at the gym and revelation comes. And I, <laughs> and I open my notes and I note in my smartphone. So then the way will be prosperous for you. That means you have to take an action. After you read, after you meditate, after you say, after you uh, talk about it, you take an action uh, similar, I mean, the same as you read. So you decide. So the, 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 the biggest thing is that you have to decide accordingly what you have read before. Hallelujah. So, because as you know, grace is the power to act. So, we say the word, we meditate on the word, we fulfill the word. The word has become flesh, the Bible says. So, you need to uh, take the word, meditate and uh, decide accordingly in the flesh. Yeah? Flesh. You need to decide. Uh, 
Many Christians are saying, oh, it is written in the Bible, Bible that I can be healed. Okay, but you are sick. <laughs> so you need to have faith and decide accordingly with the word that you are written. Many Christians are saying, oh, with God, everything is possible, but then they have depression. No, no, no. You need to adjust your soul to what is written. So you need to confirm your mindset. Many Christians are talking about themselves. Uh, I'm this. My character is this. Uh, I'm lonely. I'm this. I'm this. And they are. I don't. They don't know that they actually are talking about themselves gibberish. And then it happens in their life because they are talking about this. You need to talk to your life. What the Bible talks about your life. This is the truth. So this is it, beloved. Read the Bible. Love the Bible. <laughs> but this is not a holy book. Remember, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. So he will reveal also in the Bible what God tells you to do. But only also in the films, in stories, in meetings with people. The revelation also will come. Prophetic one. I will teach about it later. Read it digested it, decide accordingly, and let the book of Acts be expanded more and more through your life. Amen.